In the ancient city of Ur, nestled along the banks of the Tee, a boy named Abram grew up under the watchful gaze of his father Terah. His heart, however, yearned for something greater, something beyond the stone idols that filled the city. One night, as he gazed up at the star-filled sky, a voice spoke to him in a whispering wind, saying, Abram, my chosen one, leave this land in your father's house and go to the land that I will show you. Abram gathered his belongings and set out on a journey, accompanied by his brother Nahor and his wife Sarah. They traveled through deserts, crossed mighty rivers, guided by the voice that spoke to Abram in his dream. El spoke to him in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, for I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. Abraham replied, Elohim, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliza of Damascus? But El had a different plan for Abram. He led him outside and said, Look! Look now toward the heaven and count the stars. If you are able to number them, so shall your descendants be. Years passed. Abram and Sarah remained childless, but Elohim remained faithful. And when Abram was 99 years old, Elohim blessed him and said, I am almighty Elohim. Walk before me. Be blameless. I will make a covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Elohim then changed Abram's name to Abraham, meaning father of multitude. And Sarah's name was changed to Sarah. He promised that they would bear a son, and through him the covenant would be established with Abraham's descendants forever. True to his word, Sarah bore a son named Isaac. Isaac had twin sons. Esau and Yaakov. Esau was a skilled hunter favored by his mother. A series of events orchestrated by Elohim, Yaakov, later known as Yisrael, received the blessing of his father Isaac, becoming the heir of Elohim's covenant. Israel went on to have 12 sons who became the patriarchs of the 12 tribes of Israel. each tribe named after one of his sons. These tribes grew and prospered fulfilling Elohim's promise to Abraham that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. And you see, my children, that's how we got here in Egypt. As slaves, Mama? Yes, but just as Abraham's faith had been tested, he still believed. He believed in El's promise, and it was fulfilled, and we should too. He will deliver us. Remember this word, Yahushua. Yah saves. He always does. Yes, Mama. Good. Now, Miriam, it's time for you and your brother Aaron to get some sleep. Tomorrow will be better. Four days ago. <laughs> Yochebed, have you heard the news? What news, Rachel? You look troubled. Pharaoh has decreed that all Hebrew baby boys are to be killed. No, that can't be true. It's true. I heard it from a guard in the market. He said Pharaoh fears the Hebrews are becoming too numerous and powerful. Oh no, what are we going to do if it's a boy? My baby is too soon. We must trust in El's protection, but we must be cautious. Perhaps we can hide the baby or find someone outside the village who can care for him. It'll be all right, Yah saves. Yes, we must do whatever it takes to save him. Yes, Yah saves. I'll get some sleep now. Shalom Aram, how was your day? The usual. Aaron carried a record number of bricks. I see. I need to talk to you about our baby. What is it? As you know, Pharaoh has a decree to take out all Hebrew baby boys. We need to do something to protect the baby if it's a boy. What do you suggest? Well, if it's a boy, I think we should put him in a basket and place him in the river. Maybe someone will find him and take him in. 
That's a risky plan. What if something happens to him? I know it's risky, but we can't let fear dictate our actions. We must trust in Elohim. You're right. If this is what we must do to save him, then we will do it. Sometime later. Come in, the baby is coming. Midwives, Pharaoh has issued a decree. Thus says Pharaoh, all Hebrew baby boys are to be destroyed at birth. You are to carry out this order. That is all. But we cannot do such a thing. It is against our beliefs and against the will of Elohim. We cannot take the lives of innocent babies. We will not obey Pharaoh's command. We will not let this happen. We will find a way to protect the babies. Oh poor how about this? When a Hebrew woman is about to give birth, we wait until the last moment before delivering the baby, making it appear as if the birth was too quick to intervene. Then we can hide the baby and claim it was stillborn. That's a great idea. That we will do. Sometime later. How what is this? Where are those midwives that I gave the order to? Why have you disobeyed Pharaoh's command? Why are the Hebrew baby boys still alive? The Hebrew women are strong and give birth before we can arrive. We cannot control the timing of their deliveries. I'll be watching you. Come quick. Yochebed is having her baby. You're doing great, Yochebed. The baby will be here soon. It's a boy, Yochbed. He's beautiful. Thank you. He is. He's a gift from Elohim. He will do great things. Yochebed, we need to hide him. Pharaoh's soldiers are searching for Hebrew baby boys. Yes, we must protect him. We'll put him in the basket and place him in the reeds by the river when we can no longer hide him here. I'm praying someone will find him and take him in. You're getting so big, my son. Open up, this is a search. Quick, hide him. We're doing a search. There was a thief who ran through here and we're looking for him. Have you seen him? No, sir. Okay, we'll be watching. Yochebed, it is time. Yes, Haram. Ima, what are you doing? Miriam, we must trust in Elohim's plan. It'll be okay. It's okay. El will protect your brother. Okay, Abba, I'll show you again, little brother. Remember, you're safe. El will be with you, my son. Yochebed, be careful. I will follow them. Don't forget us. We love you. Elohim be with you always, my son. Princess Bithaya, have you seen the latest fashion from Thebes? The women there are wearing stunning pleated, linen dresses, adorned with gold jewelry. 
Ah, uh, yes. The fashion of Thebes is always ahead of its time. I must have one of those dresses for myself. Now hold my clothes while I go bathe. How what's that? Someone get this basket out of the water for me. Look, it's a Hebrew baby boy. He is so beautiful. What a precious gift. <laughs> Excuse me, Royal Great Wife. Would you like me to find the Hebrew mommy to nurse the baby for you? Yes, please do. Yes, ma'am. Sometime later. I found this baby in the river and have decided to adopt him as my own. Will you take him and nurse him and I will pay you? Yes, as you wish, your royalness. And so Moses was cradled in the embrace of his Hebrew family, nestled in the safety of their home until he was weaned. As Moses grew, a day came when he had to leave the safety of his Hebrew family and return to Pharaoh's palace. My dear Moses, you are destined for greatness, my son. May Elohim watch over you and guide your steps. And so, he was raised in the splendor of Pharaoh's palace, under the care of Bithia, who had rescued him from the Nile. She named him Moses, meaning drawn out, a fitting name for the child she had drawn out of the water. As he grew, Moses was educated in the ways of the Egyptians, learning their language, customs, and traditions. But little did Moses know, he was destined for a far greater purpose. Though he was being groomed for a life of privilege and power in Pharaoh's court, a stirring in his heart hinted at a calling beyond the palace walls. Let let me help you with that, my 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 elder. Thank you, but you needn't trouble yourself, Prince Moses. Non nonsense. We are brothers. Let us help each other. You call that work? Pathetic. I'll show you how it's done. Ah! Why? Moses, my brother, what troubles you so? I cannot bear to see my people treated this way. It is not right. This is how things are done to keep order and ensure the labor is done efficiently. But 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 it is not just. I cannot stand by and watch innocent people suffer. Moses, you are a son of Egypt. Remember, sometimes to stand up for what is right, one must be willing to face great challenges. But is it not my duty to ensure justice and fairness for all people, regardless of their status? I cannot turn a blind eye to the suffering of my people. Moses, you must remember your place. You are a prince of Egypt, not a champion for the Hebrews. It is not your place to intervene in their affairs. So they tata -ta tell me. Sometime later. As you know, your presence here is tolerated because of my daughter. Nevertheless, Moses, you have been trained in the ways of Egypt educated in our customs, and groomed for leadership. It is time for you to take on your responsibilities as a prince of Egypt. I am ready, Pharaoh. I have studied diligently and am prepared to serve Egypt to the best of my abilities. Good. Your new duties will include overseeing construction projects, managing resources, and representing Egypt in diplomatic matters. You will also be expected to uphold the laws of our land and maintain order among the people. Don't mess it up! You worthless slave, work harder or face the consequences. No, that's enough. Leave him alone. <clears throat> oh no. What, what, what have I done? I'll hide him. Sometime later. I told you next time you took my scale, I beat you. Hey, stop. Why do you eat your neighbor? Who made you a head and a judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Oh no, the matter is known. Meanwhile. Your Majesty, I have discovered the body of an Egyptian overseer. He has been slain. It appears that one of the Hebrews is responsible. 
Witnesses saw him flee the scene. Slain? By whom? Find this Hebrew immediately. I want him captured and brought to me. He will pay for his crime with his life. Yes, sir. Moses, you must run. Pharaoh knows about the overseer's death, and he is coming for you. I will not run. I must face Pharaoh and answer for what I have done. No, Moses. Pharaoh will not listen to reason. He seeks your life. You must flee to save yourself. Fine, I will go to Midian, where I will be saved. But I will never forget my people or the injustice they suffer. And so, Moses fled into the wilderness, a fugitive from justice but also a man with a newfound purpose. Little did he know that his actions would set in motion a series of events that would lead to his destiny as the liberator of the Hebrew people. Sometime later. What's the matter, girls? Can't handle a little work. Get away from here so we can have the water. Please, sir, let us draw water for our flocks. We mean no harm. <clears throat> what seems to be the trouble here? Mind your own business, stranger. These women are ours to deal with. They are fellow travelers seeking water for their flocks. They deserve your respect, not your aggression. Fine, let's go. Thank you, kind sir. We are daughters of Jethro, the priest of Midian. We are grateful for your help. It was my pleasure. My name is Moses. I have traveled from Egypt and seek refuge in this land. Let me water the flock for you. <coughs> How is it that you have come so soon today? A kind Egyptian man rescued us from the shepherds and even drew water for us and our flock. Huh? Where is this man? Why did you not bring him with you? Invite him to join us for a meal. Yes, father. Sometime later. Welcome, stranger. Please come and sit. My daughters have told me of your kindness. What is your name? I am called Moses. I am a stranger in this land, seeking refuge. Well, Moses, you are welcome in my home. Stay with us, and you will find shelter and friendship. Thank you. Moses, would you like to be a shepherd? Aha sure, why not? Good, then this will be your new job. We'll need to get you some new clothes. I'd also like to offer my daughter Zipporah's hand to you in marriage. I have seven but I see the way she looks at you. I'll be happy to get to know her. Great. Moses found a new home in Midian, far from the turmoil of Egypt. He married Zipporah, and together they started a family. They called their son Gerashom, for he'd said, I have become a sojourner in a foreign land. Moses embraced the life of a shepherd, finding solace and purpose in the quiet of the wilderness. Moses, you are a natural shepherd. The sheep seem to respond to your gentle touch. I have found peace in this life, Zipporah. The open fields, the clear skies, it is a welcome change from the palace of Pharaoh. Haha, the sheep are fun too. After a while the Pharaoh of Egypt passed, and the children of Israel cried because of slavery, and their cries went up to Elohim. Elohim heard them, and remembered his covenant with Abraham. Moses, Moses, hello Moses. Ah, uh, what what happened? I was calling your name, but you seemed in your thoughts. I thought you were comma. Perhaps I was. But, but I cannot forget where I came from, from Zephyr. I cannot forget my people in Egypt, still suffering under the yoke of slavery. Sometime later. These sheep are always doing weird stuff. Ah, strange. That bush is on fire, yet it doesn't seem to be burning up. 
to go or not to go check it out. Yep, I'm going. Moses, Moses. Ha. Huh. Here I am. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I am the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Elohim, why, why, why are you speaking to me? I am just a shepherd, unworthy of, of, of your attention. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But, but who am I to go, go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out, out, out of Egypt? See, see, when I come to, to, to the children of Israel and say, The Elohim of, of, of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? Wa, wa, what shall I say to them? I am that which I am. Say to them I am has sent me to you. The Elohim of your fathers, of Abraham, of Yitzhak, and of Yaakov. This is my name forever and this is my remembrance to all generations. Gather the elders of Israel, and say, Yah has seen what is done to you in Egypt, and say, I am bringing you out of Egypt to a land flowing with milk and honey. And they shall listen to you. And you and the elders of Israel shall go to the sovereign of Egypt, and say to him, Yah Elohim of the Hebrews has met with us. Let us go three days' journey into the wilderness to slaughter to him. But the sovereign of Egypt is not going to let you go. I will strike Egypt with all my wonders, and after that he shall let you go. And it shall not be empty-handed. But, but what if they do not believe me or listen to me? What is that in your hand? A, a staff. Throw it on the ground. Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. This is so that they believe that Yah has appeared to you. Now put your hand in your bosom. Now put your hand in your bosom again. If they do not believe you, nor listen to the voice of the first sign, they shall believe the voice of the second sign. If they do not believe these two signs, take water from the river and pour it on dry land and the water shall become blood. But Elohim, I am not eloquent. I am slow of speech and in tongue. Who gave humans their mouths? Is it not I, Elohim? Yo, please send by the hand of him whom you would send. Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know he speaks well. He is coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he'll be glad. Speak to him and put the words in his mouth. I am with your mouth and his mouth, and I shall teach you what to do. And he shall speak for you to the people. He shall be a mouth for you, and you shall be an Elohim for him. Take this rod in your hand, with which you shall do the signs and go. Sometime later. Moses, here is some water. You must be tired from your day of shepherding. Thank you, Zipporah. I have something important to tell you. What is it, Moses? You look troubled. Today, as I was tending to the flock, I saw a bush that was on fire but was not consumed. And then, I heard the voice of Elohim speaking to me from the bush. El spoke to you. Yes. He told me that he has seen the suffering of my, my, my people in Egypt and that he is sending me to Pharaoh to bring them out of, of, of slavery. But Moses, how can you do this? Pharaoh is a powerful ruler, and the task seems impossible. I know it will not be, be, be easy, but Elohim has promised to be with me. He has even given me a sign to show the Israelites that he has sent me. I, I won't ask you to come. You and the children are free to, to, to stay here, and I will be back for you. Moses, you must follow El's call, Moses. He has chosen you for this task, but know that I will stand by you every step of the way and be with you. Okay, thank you, Zipporah. Your support Nimi me, me, means everything to me. I know that with Elohim's help, we will fulfill his plan for us and for our people. Moses, go now, return to Egypt, for all the men who sought your life have passed away. Ebayethro, I must speak with you. Of course, my son. 
What is on your mind? The time has come for me to, to, to return to Egypt. Elohim has called me, me to lead the Israelites out of bondage. Lead the Israelites. But how can you do this? You are but one man. Elohim will be with me, Eba Yethro. He has shown me signs and wonders, and, and, and I believe he will deliver his people through me. Go with Elohim or Moses. May he protect you and guide you in all your ways. Thank you, your wisdom and guidance have been a, a, a blessing to me. I will never forget all that you have taught me. This looks like a nice place to stop and get some water. Moses, as you go back to Egypt, see that you do all those wonders before Pharaoh which I have put in your hand. But I am going to strengthen his heart, so that he does not let the people go. You'll say to Pharaoh, Yahweh says, Yisrael is my son, my firstborn, so I say to you, let my son go to serve me. But if you refuse to let him go, see, I am taking your firstborn son. And Moses? Speaking of sons, there is something you need to do, circumcise your son as you well know. Yes, Elohim. Moses, you have been chosen by Elohim to deliver his people from bondage in Egypt. But there is something you have neglected to do. What have I neglected to do? Your son has not been circumcised according to the covenant of Yahweh. Oh no. I am so sorry. Uh -oh. Zipporah, please help. Moses, we must do as Elohim commands. You are indeed a bridegroom of blood to me, Moses. This act of obedience is a sign of our commitment to Elohim. Thank you Zipporah for doing that, our lives have been spared. Let us continue on. Meanwhile, Aaron, Aaron, I have chosen you for a special task. Huh? Who is speaking to me? I am the Elohim of your fathers, of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Jacob. I have seen the suffering of my people in Egypt, and I have chosen your brother Moses to deliver them. Go now to the wilderness, where he is, and join him. Eh, I am unworthy of such a task, Elohim. Fear not, Aaron. I will be with you and Moses every step of the way. Now go, and may my presence be with you. Okay, Elohim, give me strength and wisdom to fulfill your will. May your people be freed, and may your name be glorified. Sometime later. My brother Moses. Oh and lady. I'm assuming you are my sister-in-law and that is my nephew. I am Aaron. Aaron. It is truly a blessing to see you again my brother. How are you? I am well, Moses, thanks to you. I cannot thank you enough for saving me that day. It was not I who saved you, but Elohim. He has a plan for us, Aaron, a plan to deliver our people from bondage. Elohim has spoken to me, Aaron. He has chosen us to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. We must go to the elders of Yeshorael and show them the signs that Elohim has given me. The signs. What are they, Moses? Elohim has shown me how to turn my staff into a snake and back again, and how to make my hand leprous and then heal it. These signs will show the elders that Elohim is with us. Okay my brother, let us go then and show the elders of Yashoro. Your Majesty, these men claim to be messengers of the El of Yeshua. Messengers? What message do you bring? 
We have come to demand that you let the people of Israel go into the wilderness to worship their Elohim. Worship their Elohim? Ha! And why should I allow that? Because if you do not, the Elohim of Yeshua will bring plagues upon Egypt. He has sent us to warn you. Plagues? I do not fear your Elohim. Egypt has many Elohim and they will protect us. Be gone from my sight. Perhaps we should heed their warning, my lord. The Hebrews could be a source of trouble for us. Yes, Pharaoh. It would be wise to listen to them and avoid angering their Elohim. Let's see what else they have to say. Fine. Come back. What does your El want? He demands that you let his people go into the wilderness to worship him. Never. The Hebrews are my slaves and I will not let them go. Why do you take the people from their work? Get back to your burdens. Leave my presence at once. As you wish. Sometime later. Advisors, approach me. The Israelites must have too much free time on their hands if they are talking about leaving to worship their El. We must increase their workload to keep them busy and prevent any thoughts of rebellion. Yes, my lord. Perhaps if we make their work more difficult, they will be too tired to think of anything else. You are no longer to get straw to make bricks as before. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. For they are idle. That is why they cry out, saying, Let us go and slaughter to our Elohim. Thus says Pharaoh, I do not give you straw. Go, take straw for yourselves, wherever you find it, and still make the same amount of bricks as before. Fulfill your actions, your daily matters, as when there was straw. Hey you, why have you not fulfilled your quota in making bricks both yesterday and today as before? Uh, uh, why do you treat your servants this way? There is no straw given to your servants, and they say to us, make bricks. Pharaoh says you are idle. That is why you say, let us go and slaughter to Yahweh. So now go, work, and we're not giving you any straw, but deliver the same amount of bricks. Uh, Moses, let this Yahweh look on you and judge, because you have made us loathsome in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants, to give a sword in their hand to destroy us. Elohim, why have you done evil to these people? Why did you send me? He ever since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil and you have not delivered your people at all. I am Yahweh. I appeared to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov as El Shaddai. And by my name Yahweh was I not known to them. I established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, and I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I remembered my covenant. Say to the children of Israel, I am Yahweh, and I shall bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I shall redeem you with an outstretched arm, and with great judgments, and shall take you as my people, and I shall be your El. And you shall know that I am Yahweh your Elohim who is bringing you out. And I shall bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, to Yitzhak, and Yaakov, to give it to you as an inheritance. I am Yahweh. Yes, El. Everyone, hear the words of Yahweh, the El of your fathers Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. He has heard your cries and seen your suffering in Egypt. He has remembered his covenant with your forefathers and has come to deliver you from bondage. How can we believe you, Mosers? Pharaoh has only increased our burdens since you spoke to him. Listen to me, my people. Yahweh has promised to bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, to deliver you from their enslaving, and to redeem you with an outstretched arm and great judgments. We have heard such promises before Moses. Our spirits are too crushed from our hard slavery to believe in deliverance. I understand your doubts and fears, but you must trust in Yahweh. He has not forgotten you, and he will fulfill his promises. He will take you as his people, and he will be your El. Ha, ah, yeah, right. Rubbish. I am here on behalf of the El of Israel. He has spoken to me, and he commands you to let his people go. 
And why should I listen to you, a mere man? Because Yahweh has made me an authority to speak to you. He has also appointed my brother Aaron as a prophet to convey his messages to you. Your words mean nothing to me. Why should I believe that your El is greater than all the gods of Egypt? Show me a sign. This is indeed a great miracle. But I remain unconvinced. Wise men, come. Do your thing. See, we have power too. Yahweh has spoken. If you do not let his people go, he will bring great judgments upon Egypt. I will not be swayed by your threats. Leave my presence at once. As you wish. Go to Pharaoh in the morning, as he goes out to the water, stand by the river's bank to meet him. Take your staff and say Yahweh the Elohim of the Hebrews has sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, so that they serve me in the wilderness, but you have not listened. This says Yahweh, by this you know that I am Yahweh. See, I am striking the waters which are in the river with the rod then, and they shall be turned to blood, and the fish in the river shall die. And the river shall stink, and the Egyptians will find it impossible to drink the water. Yes, El. Have you heard? Moses and Aaron are here again, demanding that Pharaoh let the Hebrews go. Yes, I heard, but Pharaoh's heart is as hard as ever. He will not listen to them. Pharaoh, Yahweh, the El of the Hebrews, has sent me to you. He commands you to let his people go, so that they may serve him in the wilderness. But you have not listened. You will see. What is this sorcery? How can this be? This is an outrage. How dare you bring this upon us, Moses and Aaron? What is this madness? How can the river be turned to blood? Moses and Aaron must have used some sort of trickery. Great Pharaoh. We have studied the arts of magic for years. Perhaps we can replicate this feat and show that we too have power. Do it. Show me that you can match the power of these Hebrews. They did it. Indeed it seems they have. You have proven yourselves to be powerful sorcerers. I will listen to your counsel. What do you suggest we do next? Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Yahweh says let my people go, so that they serve me. But if you refuse to, I am smiting all your border with frogs. And the river shall swarm with frogs, they'll come into your house, into your bedroom, and on your bed, and into the houses of your servants, and on your people, and into your ovens, and into your kneading bowls, even on you. S.L. Pharaoh. Yahweh says let my people go. If not, frogs will smite your border. I will not let his people go. Great Pharaoh, we can do it too. Watch this. Fool! You just made our frog problem worse. But ha! Look Moses and Aaron, look at what we can do. Sometime later. Gah! These frogs are everywhere. I can't take it anymore. Someone get me Moses and Aaron. Pray to Yahweh to take away these frogs from me and my people. If you do, I will let the Hebrews go and worship Yahweh. When would you like us to pray for you? When should the frogs be removed? Tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow would be fine. Very well, tomorrow it is.
then you will know that there is no one like Yahweh our Elohim. Finally the frogs are gone. I can breathe again. You're going to let the Hebrews go now? Pish! I will not let them go. There is no Elohim that can make me change my mind. Pharaoh is still not listening. Say to Aaron, stretch out your rod, and strike the dust of the land, so that it becomes gnats in all the land of Egypt. Let it be known, O Pharaoh, that this is the finger of Elohim at work. This is another trick. Your L has no power over me. We cannot match the power of their L. This is beyond our abilities. It must be the work of a divine force. I will not let the Hebrews go. No amount of plagues will change my mind. <coughs> Servant, why are there flies in my food? Guards! Throw this one in jail. Flies in my food, can you believe this? Someone get me Moses and Aaron. Moses, go slaughter to your Elohim but in my land. It is not right to do so. We must go three days journey into the wilderness to slaughter to Yahweh our Elohim, as he commands us. And why should I agree to this? If we slaughter the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, they will stone us. Let us go into the wilderness as we request. Very well, but do not go very far away. Pray for me. I shall pray to Yahweh, and tomorrow the swarms of flies shall depart from you and your people. But do not deceive again, Pharaoh. Why does Yahweh keep sending these plagues? Perhaps it is a sign that we should let the Hebrews go. No, I will not let them go. The flies are gone this morning. Servant, tell them I rescind my order. They shall not go serve their L in the wilderness. Ha ha ha, fools. Pharaoh, thus says Yahweh Elohim of the Hebrews, let my people go so that they serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and are still holding them, you see, tomorrow the hand of Yahweh is on your livestock in the field, on the horses, on the donkeys, on the camels, on the cattle, and on the sheep, the very grievous pestilence. And Yahweh shall separate between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt. Ha! We have protected our cows. We have the best raised livestock in the land. Nothing can touch them, especially your Eli. Your Majesty, a great calamity has befallen our land. All the livestock of Egypt have perished overnight, yet the livestock of the Hebrews remain unharmed. What do you mean all the livestock? Horses, cattle, donkeys, sheep, and goats, all dead. It's a disaster, Your Majesty. Perhaps this is a sign from Yahweh. Let the Hebrew people go, Pharaoh, before more harm comes to Egypt. No, I will not be swayed by these tricks. The Hebrews will remain in bondage. Send word to their leaders that they are to be given even more work to keep them occupied. Fill your hands with ashes from a furnace and scatter it toward the heavens before the eyes of Pharaoh. And it shall become fine dust in all the land of Egypt, and it shall cause boils that break out in sores on man and beast in all the land of Egypt. What is this you bring before me now, Moses and Aaron? This is a message from Yahweh, the heir of the Hebrews. He commands you to let his people go, or else this land will suffer another plague. And what is this plague you speak of? That's all you got? Guards! Next time search these people scattering ashes all over my throne room. These are the boils that Yahweh has sent upon Egypt. They will afflict men and beasts throughout the land unless you heed his command. What is this torment? Make it stop! Pharaoh, this is the finger of Elohim. He is more powerful than all the El of Egypt. Please let the Hebrews go, Your Majesty. No, 
I will not give in to the demands of this L of the Hebrews. Send word to the Hebrew leaders that their request is denied. We will endure these boils and overcome them. Let us go pray to Ra. Have you heard the rumor? The next plague is going to be hail, destroying everything in its path. Yes, I've heard. I've decided to take precautions and bring my servants and livestock inside the house. Ha, I wish I lived in Goshen now, it seems nothing is touching the Hebrew people. Why bother? These plagues are just superstitions. I'm leaving my servants and livestock in the fields. They'll be fine. Moses, Aaron, I have sinned against Yahweh. He is righteous, and I and my people are in the wrong. Please pray to Yahweh to stop this thunder and hail. I will let your people go. They shall stay no longer in bondage. As soon as I leave the city, I will spread out my hands to Yahweh. The thunder will cease, and the hail will be no more. Then you will know that the earth belongs to Yahweh. But I know that neither you nor your servants fear Yahweh yet. You playing these games, Yahweh is truly powerful. I have seen his wonders, and I will let the Hebrews go. They shall be free from their bondage. Yes, that I will do. Yahweh, in your mercy, please stop the thunder and hail. The hail is gone. His heart may have softened for a moment, but it will harden again. Indeed, the power of Yahweh is great, but Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. Sometime later. You're back? Pharaoh, you play games with the Most High Yahweh. This is what the El of the Hebrew says, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go, so they can serve me. If you refuse, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your country. They will cover the land, and eat what little you have left after the hail. They will fill your houses and those of all your officials and all the Egyptians, something neither your ancestors nor your forefathers have ever seen from the day they settled in this land till now. Pharaoh, how long will this man be a snare to us? Let the people go so that they may worship Yahweh their El. Do you not yet realize that Egypt is ruined? Fine gods, bring them back. Go, worship Yahweh your El. But tell me who all will be there. We will go with our young and old, with our sons and daughters, and with our flocks and herds, because we are celebrating a festival to El. Yahweh be with you. What if I let you and your children go? Clearly you are bent on evil. Never mind, no. Have only the men go and worship Yahweh since that's what you have been asking for. Yes, that should suffice. Now leave me. Moses stretch out your hand over the land of Mitzrayim for the locusts to come upon the land of Mitzrayim and eat every plant of the land, all that the hail has left. Ah, my fig trees, bring me Moses! Moses, I have sinned against Yahweh your Elohim and against you. Please forgive my sin only this once, and pray to Yahweh your Elohim, that he would only turn away this death from me. Pharaoh, the locusts have gone. Will you let these people go? Never. Fools, servant, bring me some water and tell the taskmasters to increase the burdens of the Hebrews again. They have locust poop to clean up. Ha ha ha! Ah! What happened to the light? Ow! 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 Ouch! <coughs> Ow! Ah, the light has come back. Someone get me Moses and Aaron. Moses, go serve Yahweh. Only leave your flocks and your herds behind. Let your little ones go with you too. Not so. You yourself are to provide us with slaughterings and ascending offerings to prepare for Yahweh our Elohim. Our livestock are to go with us too, not a hoof is to be left behind, for we have to take some of them to serve Yahweh our Elohim, we ourselves do not know with what we are to serve Yahweh until we come there. How dare you defy me! I am the Pharaoh of Egypt. I decide what you can take and what you must leave behind. Get away from me! Watch yourself and see my face no more, for in the day you see my face you will die. Oh, you have spoken right. 
Never again do I see your face. Moses, I am bringing one more plague on Pharaoh in Egypt. After that he is going to let you go. When he lets you go, he shall drive you out from here altogether. Tell the people to do this. Hear me, my fellow Israelites. This month is the beginning of months for you, a new moon it is to be the first month of our year. On the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family. About midnight Yahweh is going out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the servant who is behind the hand mill, and the firstborn of cattle. But against any of the children of Israel not even a dog should move, so that you know that Yahweh makes distinction between Egypt and Israel. Let everyone ask from their Egyptian neighbors, objects of silver and gold. The animals you choose must be your old males, without defect. If the household is too small for the lamb, then share. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where you eat the lamb. Finally, make enough unleavened bread to last seven days, no leaven should be found in your belongings. Eat the meat roasted over the fire, with bitter herbs, and bread made without yeast. Do not leave of it until morning, and what remains, you are to burn with fire. Eat it with your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, eat it quickly. Do not go outside until it is morning. I repeat, do not go outside until it is morning. All Israelites, you shall guard this word as a law for you and your generations, forever. It is the Passover of Yahweh. Uh, fools. I'm not doing that. Rubbish. My son, what have I done? My pride and arrogance have cost me everything. Someone get me Moses. Sometime later. Moses, rise, and take the children of Israel with you. Leave my land and go serve Yahweh, as you have requested. Take your flocks and herds with you, and may you also bless me before you depart. Hurry. <laughs> Leave us before we all perish. Go, and may Yahweh be with you. I have brought this upon myself and my people. Everyone, gather your belongings and prepare to leave. Take your dough before it has leavened and carry your kneading bowls on your shoulders. Let's get ready to go, people. Today marks the end of our stay in Egypt. Yarwa has delivered us, just as he promised. Let us remember this day and give thanks for our freedom. Elder, do you remember the oath Yosef made the children of Israel promise? Yes, Moses. Joseph made us swear, saying, God will surely come to your aid, and then you must carry my bones up with you from this place. It is time to fulfill that promise. We must find Yosef's bones and take them with us as we leave Egypt. Yes, Moses. Set apart to Elohim all the firstborn, for they belong to him. Remember this day when you went out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. It is by the strength of Yahweh's hand that you are leaving this place, do not eat anything leavened. When Elohim brings you into the land he promised, a land flowing with milk and honey, you shall keep the service in this new moon. For seven days, you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day, there shall be a festival to Elohim, you must keep this law from year to year, as a reminder of his deliverance. 
And when your children ask you in the future, what is this, tell them, by strength of the hand Elohim brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall tell them of the firstborn that was spared by Elohim's command, and of the ransom paid for them. We will not go through Philistine territory, though it is shorter to get to the promised land, we don't want to be frightened by their war. We will go through the Red Sea. We will follow the cloud of Yahweh by day and his fire by night. We will always follow Yahweh. Why have we allowed the Israelites to leave us? Who will serve us now? Majesty, they were causing us great trouble. Perhaps it is better they are gone. No, we must bring them back. Prepare my chariot and gather the 600 chariot army. They are camped near Pi Hahiroth. We will pursue the Israelites and bring them back to Egypt. Moses, awake. Pharaoh is coming. Did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? We told you in Egypt, leave us alone! It would have been better to serve the Egyptians than to die here! There are no burial sites here. What have you done, Moses? Everyone, do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the salvation of Yahweh, which he will accomplish for you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Yahweh will fight for you, you need only to be still. Charge! Get them! Oh! No! 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 Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the Israelites to move forward. Lift up your rod, and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it and let the children of Israel go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Can it be? The sea has parted before them. Um, maybe your greatness we should not pursue them. This is surely the hand of their Elohim at work. No. They are trapped. We will overtake them and bring them back. Onward. Ah! Ah! The Egyptians are coming! No! Ah! Should we still fear in the midst of Yah's power? Yah saves! Look! Chariots won't move. The waters are closing in on us, but not on them. It's Yahweh. He's fighting against us. Retreat, retreat. Ah! Sing to Yahweh, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Today, we have witnessed the mighty hand of Yahweh, who has saved us from our enemies and brought us out of bondage. Let us give thanks and praise. Your saves. And so, our people, the Israelites, led by Moses, danced and sang on the shores of the Red Sea, grateful for their freedom and triumph, a testament to God's power and his promise of deliverance. And so that's why we keep the Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread as a memorial and the Torah as the commandments? Haha, <laughs> yes, to remember all he's done for us. Now get some sleep, Miriam, and remember, Yah saves. Who is like you?